welcome back. We are so glad to have you. If you don't know who I am, my name is Kenny, and I'm a part of the staff team here at Mosaic Church. You get a chance to serve in our student ministries department. And yeah, Kenny! Work. That's right. We've got a, got a fan club uh, Woo, Kenny. here. Kenny with Josh is in it. Uh, I'm glad. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Good to have you. Um, I get a chance to serve uh, serve the student ministry department, and I love hanging out with high school students. Um, really, really loved it, uh, particularly because God really transformed my life uh, when I was in high school. Um, God really grabbed a hold of my heart, and a lot of life decisions that affect me till today at age 31 really are decisions that I made at when I was in high school, and that really stuck with me. So I love to get a chance to do what I do. Absolutely love uh, hanging out with you guys. Uh, side note. Uh, this, uh, we're in the middle of a series uh, called Post It. And so last week we talked about being a follower and what it really looked like to be a follower. And tonight we're going to talk about likes and what does it mean to like certain things. And in this series of Post It, but the side note that I want to point out in this video, my favorite part of the video, I think, is, uh, is when the person is changing a relationship status. They go from single to in a relationship. Or at some point in the video, they go from single to. It's complicated. It's complicated. Let me tell you something. Hey, ladies. If you are ever in a relationship and where it's complicated applies to you, run away from that relationship as fast and as hard as possible, all right? Men, if you are in a relationship where the woman feels like it's complicated, you are not a man, you are a boy, and you should not be in a relationship. Now, that was free. We're not talking about relationships tonight, but I figured I would just throw that out there because uh, as a men should be should be living their lives in such a way that they're clear with their intentions. It should never be it's complicated. It should be very clear where you stand in your relationship. So I just thought that was free. There's absolutely nothing. That was not in my notes. And I just saw that then and I thought, you know, that's kind of funny. Um, I actually recently saw a Facebook, a fake Facebook profile or Instagram, I forget what it was, what profile I saw. Uh, it must have been Facebook. And uh, it was uh, of Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And her relationship status was, it's complicated. So I thought that was, I thought that was kind of funny. Anyway, um, so tonight we want to talk, uh, we've been talking about social media, we've been talking about the idea of uh, being, res last week we talked about being responsible in our social media, and we talked about reflecting the image of God. For those of you here, we talked about the fact that God is a trinity, God is a more than one person, and he is, has a perfect harmony and relationship, and he connects uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in perfect connection, and God longs for us to have perfect connection with one another and with him. We talked about how sometimes our stupid decisions are an obstacle between us connecting with God in the harmonious way that he would want. Uh, and our stupid decisions and our sin, and sometimes the sin of other people, uh, can become an obstacle in the way in our ability to reflect God and be the image of God. And so um, we uh, just we want to talk about the idea of liking things. We just watched this video uh, during worship. We talked about the idea of loneliness, and so we have this epidemic in, in the United States right now where we have more ways to connect with one another than ever before. But yet more people today feel lonely than ever before. And so we talked about last week that, you know, uh, that more than 70% of Americans say that they are lonely today. Um, the idea that they feel like they're not connected to people, but yet they have more opportunity than ever before. And so we recognize this here at Mosaic Students. We want to really foster an environment where you as, as senior high students are really connecting to one another. That's the reason why we're making a huge push on missional communities. We're making a huge push on really getting having quality connection. Not just uh, Instagram likes. I know I'm an Instagram fanatic. Anyone follow me on Instagram? Raise your hand. Who has an Instagram? Raise your hand. If you have Instagram. Okay. Everyone, if you have an Instagram, raise your hand. If you are already following me, put your hands down. See, now, all right. Now, for those of you who are not following me, listen, which you, your number one priority tonight for you today is to look at Kenneth Ortiz, one, two, three, on Instagram. I'm just kidding. Um, no, we can, have a, we can have all sorts of social media connect, but we really want to connect. Uh, we want to have great relationships. So we're making a huge push on our missional communities. If you are missing out, if you are not in a missional community, you are missing out on a huge element of Mosaic students. So what we're going to do tonight, I want everyone to stand your feet for a second. I'm going to stand up. All right. If you are in a mission of community already, if you already signed up for one, or you are already in a mission of community, raise your hand. And in my mission of community, we have not met yet, but you, you have signed up for mine, you are in mine. Great. All right. If you are in a mission of community, great. If you are, you can put your hands down. If you are not in a mission of community, raise your hand. All right. Great. All right. 
more than half the room. Okay, so we're gonna do, I want you to sit tonight in your missional community, and if you're not in a missional community, we're going to assign you to where to sit tonight, because we're going to have some discussion, and we want to do that in our missional community. So if you are in Justin, you are in Justin's missional community, raise your hand. You are in Justin's missional community. You can raise your hand. All right. If you are in Justin or Joel's, raise your hand. All right, I want, you to, I want you to come sit right here in the very front, right here, quickly. If you are in my missional community, come, you can come sit right here in the front, right here. If you are in Chandler's missional community, who's in Chandler's? Raise your hand if you're in Chandler's. I want you to go sit right back in that section right there. All right, if you are in Chandler's missional community. All right, if you are in Brittany's missional community, raise your hand. Who's in Brittany? We got it right here. Why don't you guys come shift over here and sit over here. Just shift in this section over here. If you are not in the missional community, step out of your seats. Step out of your seats. If you are in Brook, Brooks Durango's missional community, raise your hand. If you are in Brooks, any everyone's attention, shh. Any everyone's attention. If you are in Brooks Durango's missional community, will you sit in the will you sit in this back section right here? Alright? Awesome, awesome. Alright. If you are a high school girl, ninth and tenth grade, raise your hand. Great. Why don't you join Brooks Durango's missional community right here? Great. If you are ninth and tenth grade dude, raise your hand. All right, would you join my guys, my mission and community right over here? Awesome. All right, every if you are in 11th and 12th grade, why don't you guys come sit right over here? All 11th and 12th graders sit right over here. Great. All right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Hey, why don't you girls? Uh, hey, uh, Brittany's mission and community. Why don't you guys join Brooks right there? And we'll have a little. We're All right. No, be confused. What was that? We're Chandler. Chandler. You guys are Chandler. You guys can sit right where you are. All right. Great. Awesome, awesome. Oh, you can see it. It's great. All right, can I get a whoop whoop? Whoop whoop. All right, awesome. Well, what we're going to do. Tonight we want to dive in. We're going to be talking about social media. And we want to really want to discuss why is it that we like, uh, if you guys, want to be, a group of you guys want to move over there, you don't, you can stay where you are. It's fine. If you want. All right, so we're going to talk about why is it that we have, that we like social media. Um, we're going to talk about, but first we want to kind of break in your social, in your mission <laughs> communities right now. We want to kind of just spend about two or three minutes discussing uh, what uh, what types of things you like about social media? And so we're actually going to throw that question up on the screen. What is it? What are the types of things that you like about social media? What sorts of things do you do on social media most? Uh, what do you enjoy engaging in? And why do you think you like that so much? So for me, I love Instagram. I like clicking on photos because I like particularly crazy photos because I like seeing my friends be silly. Right? So that's something that's one thing. I can give you a whole long list of things because I'm a social media addict myself. And so what I'm doing, just want to in your missional community, maybe just break up into groups of like three or four people. Just find three or four people near you right now. And I'm going to give you guys just about two minutes. And I want every person to share with other people, every person in this room, this is required, must share with the people around you, what is it about social media that I love most, or what sorts of things, questions on the board, on the screen, what do I like in, engaging in and why? So you guys can do that right now. Find three or four people and start sharing that with people around you. Find the three close people to you and do that. If you have no form of social media, just assume what you think you might like about social media if you have it. Just speculate.
one minute, one more minute, make sure everyone shares, one minute. 30 seconds. Nothing on social media. Why is that, Mr. Baker? I don't have a social media because I love my friends. I love face. Look at this. He loves face to face. See, this is Josh. He likes to talk to his like faraway friends, people he doesn't talk to on a regular basis or maybe can't talk too close. The way Mr. Baker loves to do. All right, Tori, tell me why. What are some of your favorite things to do on social media? Why? Sharing my pictures. You love sharing your pictures, right? Um, the Ripleys love sharing their photos on Instagram. <laughs> looking at people. You love looking at people. AKA stalking. <laughs> Hashtag creeper status. All right. Who else? Uh, someone else give me a yes. Uh, so. You like Instagram? What, what about Instagram do you like? You like the filter? Why do you like the filters? <laughs> Make sure pictures look better. That's right. It's good. It's good. I like that. It's good. Someone else give me uh, something they love to do on social media. Talk to people. Talk to people. All right. Anyone else want to share? Nope. Still not. You want to see what your friends are up to? All right. Read. You want to read? You like to read on social media? Yeah. That's good. Some websites. There are many people in this room that don't read. That's right. We are working on that. Thank you for being one of the good ones. That's good. That's good. We're working on that. We're working on that. That's all right. I think um, I think many of us like to do a variety of different things on social media, and we like to engage in different things on the internet. Uh, and I think it's really indicative of what's going on on the inside of us. And so someone like Josh, Josh loves to connect and keep remain in contact with people. And so it would make sense that he is someone that loves to uh, connect with people maybe that he doesn't get a chance to connect to face to face. Or Sierra loves to read and she likes challenging her mind, which is a good thing. And maybe some of us would do well to do that more often. And so she would read on social media. That's really good. Um, I think we ought to be very careful on what we engage in on social media. I think we ought to be very careful on what things we click the like button on what things we like to look at, what things we choose to engage in, whether that be Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, if, that, if that's YouTube, or Vimeo, or Vine, or Ask FM, right, or whatever item that you choose to engage in online, chat rooms or forums. Uh, we talked last week, those of you here, we joked about uh, AOL Instant Messenger, we, talk, we joked about ITQ back in the 90s. Internet, I, mean, I, I just love that stuff. So we need to be very, very cautious. Uh, why do you guys think, um, you guys, man, why do you think it should be, we ought to be cautious with what we engage in? So why should we pay attention to the things we engage in? Why does it matter? Yeah, answer that out loud. Yeah, in the back, yes. Ms. Ripley. There's two. There's two. Just pick one amongst yourselves. Because it shows what you're interested in. Shows what you're interested in? All right, why would that matter? So it's potentially, if you're liking or engaging in things that maybe are inappropriate, mm -hmm. then it could project an image that is opposite than the image you might want to project. People are going to look at you in a way that maybe you don't want them to look at you. Okay, that makes sense. Second, Ripley, version two, um, yes. <laughs> 2.0. But seen cannot be unseen, so like, if something pops up, it'll, it'll not haunt you, but it'll like, hurt you. That's right. If, if once someone sees you do something, you can't take it back. It, we talked about that last week. Once it's on the internet, once it's out there, it's out there. And it can never, ever, ever be taken back. So you can be very, very cautious on what you engage in because you can never unsee what you see, and the people who are watching you and following you will never be able to unsee what you've done. Yes? 
I'm just going to strum it up to what? Cyber bullying. Cyber bullying, right? What do you call this? To the cyber bullying? Give me a little more. Unpack that for a second. I actually think this is a thing for you to get your cyber bullying. The cyber bullying can come in a lot of ways. Some of my friends had a YouTube account. He was talking about a Teen Titans video for those of us who love Teen Titans. Hashtag 90s kids. Um, <laughs> you, can, you, got, you, got a, you got a little, like, a uh, little raise the roof in the back there. You got to yeah. raise the roof, so you're good. But, um, so anyways, some guy says, and I will not repeat the words that he used, but it's like, oh, look, some guy giving out random information that no one cares about. And he got in a huge argument with him. Now, again, this goes with what you say can't be unsaid. He didn't use any profanic words, but it was, he made a, a, a fool of himself. So you just got to be careful of what you engage in. Because if you engage in it with an argument on the internet, in the end, nobody looks better. It's not a matter of who looks better. It's just a matter of, like, okay, you know, cyber bully, just don't respond to them. Don't be the trolls. Good. All right. Anyone else want to share? Mr. Mom. <laughs> It is really, really easy to build bad habits online. Isn't that the truth? Uh, I, I believe we ought to be incredibly cautious with how we engage with social media. There's a couple other reasons. Uh, these are all good reasons. A couple other reasons. Uh, what you do on the internet, what you do in social media, can be easily taken out of context. Very easily. And so I'm very, very cautious. So even like I have a sister who's 27 years old, who has, who's married with two kids. I love my little sister desperately. She's my little sister. She's 27, but to me she's a baby because she's always been a little sister. And so, but sometimes she'll go to the beach and she'll post photos of herself in a bathing suit. If I click like on my sister's photos, people don't necessarily know this. My sister, she doesn't have the last name Ortiz. She's married. Her last name is Mora. So people can go on my Instagram and they see Kenny is liking photos of a girl in a bikini. Isn't that a little inappropriate? Man, isn't that guy in ministry? Isn't he, wasn't he preaching about being pure? And so I may like a photo of my sister on Instagram, but it could be completely taken out of context. And so my sister goes to the beach, she posts photos. I can assure you, I'm never looking at my sister in an inappropriate or lustful manner. Ever. Oh. Ever. Right? Okay? I think I just threw up a little bit in my throat. Right? But I choose not to like that photo because it can be taken out of context. I don't know what's going to happen. I'll give me another example. Last Friday, I was at an event at Disney. Uh, with a couple people who are in their 20s and 30s, and there were a few people that had some uh, adult beverages. They had alcohol beverages. No one got drunk. Most people had one drink. It was nothing inappropriate going on. No one was drunk. Um, and some people posted some photos, and I was in a photo with someone else who was holding a beer. And so you know what? Uh, I you know, I don't want that photo on my Facebook. Not because I was doing anything wrong. I didn't do anything inappropriate. I didn't do anything sinful. But it could be taken out of context. They look at a photo. It's late night at a lodge. Kenny's wearing a tank top and a picture, and there's some dude drinking a beer next to him. People can look and they go, whoa, was Kenny at a party? Was Kenny getting drunk? I thought this guy was a pastor. I thought this guy was in ministry. I thought this guy was preaching to young people. What, what is that all about? And very quickly now, what begins to happen is we now can lose our credibility. I did nothing wrong. It was completely innocent. But the reality is it could be viewed out of context. And so we need to be extremely cautious as you go through your high school career and into your adult years that you begin to make choices that will help you not fall in a situation where you can be taken out of context. Be extremely, truly cautious. Things like uh, Facebook pages, you know, they change their names over time. Sometimes you may like a photo, like, like a Facebook page, and it changes its name. Or there's a meme you see, and you click like on it. Um, or, you know, this is, this is the reality, is that you can be easily in a situation where you get associated with something you don't want to be associated with. So sometimes when, like, pages on Facebook or different organizations or different... Uh, you know, uh, public pages and profiles, post things on social media, whether it be YouTube or Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. When things are posted, I'm very cautious if I click like on something because you never know what they might later on post. And if you have liked something they did before, even if it was good, they post something that's inappropriate, later down the road you can be associated with something and making you look bad. And so we're going to be extremely, extremely cautious. Um, but I think there's a bigger reason and all those reasons, all the reasons you guys gave and the reasons what I kind of laid out, I believe are very valid. However, I think there's even a greater reason as to why uh, we would engage in social media responsibly. The reason why you need to be cautious and be careful and think about what you're doing, whether it be posting or consuming, whether you're looking or, or consuming. In fact, most of my social media engagement is not 
outward. It's mostly consuming. In fact, I tweeted this on uh, some of you guys who follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, I jokingly posted something on Twitter yesterday. Uh, even when you don't see me on the internet, I'm always here, scrolling and judging. And so, uh, do you guys want to see that? Do you see that? Anyone? All right, one I saw, person. One I saw person. It, Kenny. You did see Thanks. Good. Like you decided not to like it? So, so he was like, see, I don't want to be associated with Kenny. I don't know. I could, I could be associated. But uh, I say it jokingly, but the reality is most of my internet consumption uh, or my internet use is, is consumption, is inward. And so we'd be extremely cautious as to what we're taking in because it can impact uh, our life. There's so much of the world that influences how we make decisions, that influences how we think and how we develop our thought processes. And so we want to be very cautious. But even bigger than that, I think someone over here, someone in the back said it. I can't remember who it was. But what you engage in and what you post outwardly speaks to what's going on in your heart. Jesus said it this way. Luke chapter 6, verse 45. Um, it's going to be on the screen. Jesus said this, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Whatever's in your heart, it's going to overflow. And whatever's coming out of your mouth, whatever's coming out of your life, see, if Jesus was alive today, he was walking planet Earth today, he might say something like this, Out of the abundance of the heart, the thumbs go posting. He, he might say, From the abundance of the heart, you click the like button. Because whatever is going on inside of here, it's going to overflow. I always think it's funny when people say things like, well, that's just not me. When people get mad, or they're in traffic, and they're driving, and they get angry, or and they're in a situation that frustrates them, and then they act in a way that is inappropriate, or disrespectful, or embarrassing, <laughs> and later they'll come back and say, oh, that wasn't just me. That wasn't me. It was a circumstance. No, no, no. That is you. That is you. You got squeezed, and what was really inside of you came out. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's, Jesus is saying, listen, whatever's on the inside of your heart, it's going to come out. So when you're playing a, a game and you get angry at someone because of the game, you're like, well, that's not me. I, it was just a game. No, no. You, you got angry because there's some anger in your heart that needs to be dealt with. Whatever's coming out of you, whatever you are, whatever you're watching, whatever you're attracted to, whatever you're liking, whatever you're, not just, I'm not just, when I say liking, I don't mean just mean clicking the like button. I'm talking about whatever you like to engage in reflects what's going on on the inside. My, uh, I think one of the best examples this I've ever seen was uh, from the movie Toy Story. Who's ever seen Toy Story? Raise your hand. In Toy Story? All right. All right, tell me, who was the villain in the first movie, Toy Story? Who was the villain? Sid. Sid. Is there, I mean, Sid, the crazy uh, junior high boy who liked to, what did he like to do? Destroy, destroy toys. He liked to inflict pain and destroy toys. Now, this was indicative of what was going on in Sid's heart. Sid liked to destroy toys. He liked to inflict pain on toys because there was something going on inside of Sid. And therefore, he would engage in doing something that he enjoyed to do. And it pointed to what was going on inside of him. And so, just take a second and really ask yourself, what are the things I like to enjoy, that I enjoy engaging in? And not just social media. How about... Uh, movies you watch. I mean, if you really like to watch movies that are really violent and maybe have inappropriate, you know, bloody, gory things, it's, it's probably because there's something inside of you that likes violence. There's something broken on the inside that Jesus can heal and he wants to heal. If you like, uh, if you like watching movies cons constantly about uh, romance and marriage and relationships, I know all the guys love to watch the chick flicks on a regular basis. <laughs> See, if you like to watch movies over and over and over and over and over again, it's because you're longing for something. And it may not necessarily be a bad thing going on inside of you, but we want to be very cautious and evaluate, okay, what's going on in my life? What do I like to do? And ask yourself, does that speak to something going on in the inside that maybe doesn't really honor God? If I like to engage in gossip, why is that? If I like to engage in bullying, if I like to engage in making other people feel like crap with my words or my actions, ask yourself, why would I enjoy engaging in some of those things? Jesus says, whatever's in the heart is going to come out through your mouth, through your lifestyle, through the things you engage with. So there's three kind of things that I think um, that we often do on a regular basis on social media and in our lives. First one I want to point out, I think, is sometimes we like things 
because we want to post, we, sometimes we like things or we engage in things or we post things because we want to project a certain image. I think someone mentioned it. Uh, think, about, think about this. When was the last time you did something or you staged an event or you did something purely to make someone out there in the world think you were cool or project a certain image? When was the last time you did something or staged something to project an image that maybe was not 100% accurate? So I want you to do, I want you to get back in your groups, two or three people. We're just going to spend just one minute, and I want you to share with the person next to you. Everyone just find one person next to you. Grab, your, grab a buddy. Find a buddy. Everyone grab your buddy, whoever's next to you. Grab your hand. Olive, grab his hand right here. Look, can grab his wrist right there. Grab his wrist. There we go. All right. And just share with someone. Just get to take one minute and share with the person next to you. When what was the last time I did something just to make the world look at me a certain way? When was the last time you engaged in some form of social media or some action in your life that was purposed at making yourself look a certain way that's not 100% accurate? Like I photoshopped my face on a really muscular guy's body and posted it. No, I didn't want to do that. That would be an example of an inappropriate posting. <laughs> Ten seconds. I mean, everyone just share, and then I'm going to share one of mine. That'll be funny. Oh. All right. Can I, can I get a whoop whoop? Can I get a whoop whoop? Can I get? A, oh yeah! Oh yeah! All right, here we go. So two weeks ago, you guys know Breezy. Raise your hand. She's a sixth grade girl and a middle school student with us. All right. So she just got an Instagram. And uh, for those of you, is anyone following me on Instagram that saw the video of me getting excited? Yeah. All right, if, you do, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you want to get a good, a good laugh, really get a good laugh. Uh, what you want to do is go follow me and watch a video um, of me and Breezy. Breezy came to me and told me that she was going to get an Instagram and that I could be her first follower. And I was really excited. And so I was, I was genuinely excited. But I said, okay, Breezy, what we, what we need to do, we need to, like, we need to stage it. So I had someone get a camera, and I got Chandler. Were you the one with the camera? Oh, sorry. Right. Okay, so we staged an event where I was going to be, like, really crazy and happy and excited. Um, and I literally did this motion. Ah! Ah! It was great. You guys see the video. Okay. But I, we staged an event. Now, I really am excited about Breezy getting an Instagram because she can follow me, and we can like each other's photos. That's exciting. But I wanted to stage an event that made it, Larger. I wanted to amplify it. I wanted it to be bigger. So sometimes uh, we do this in a playful way, in a funny way, and it's, and it's okay. It's everyone, I think, watches the video. You know, he gets Kenny being silly and exaggerating. It's actually quite an entertaining video to watch. And that was it. So I purposely posted a video that projected an image that was not 100% accurate for the purpose of your entertainment. Okay. A lot of times, though, we do this in a very destructive way. We post things. We post things to... We post things to make ourselves look better because we want to impress people. Right? I mean, we don't really think all that highly of ourselves, and therefore we choose to uh, post things in such a way that people will look at us and you know how many likes we can get or we can how much engagement we can get from people. Because I want to encourage you to ask yourself, really ask yourself, how often am I engaging in social media in such a way that I'm trying to impress people or I'm projecting an image that maybe isn't accurate? And really that's a form of... <laughs> That's a form of deception. It's really lying. It's sin. <clears throat> and it may be not just social media. Maybe for many of us, we probably do this a lot in our lives outside of social media. How often have you engaged in something in your life or you've done something in your life, maybe today, that you've done because you want to project a certain image and you want the world to think you're so Maybe you're in worship and you want people around you to think you're really spiritual, so you, you worship really good. <laughs> Amen, Joel. 
Maybe because you want to be, maybe maybe because you want to be uh, looked at as something cooler than what you think you really are. You want to you want to go above and beyond. You want to project a certain image. You do certain things. I think the second type of destructive social media habits is uh, is doing things in secret. Let me say this: if you're doing something that is secretive, whether it's social media or in your life as a whole, if it's if you're doing it in a secret. It's probably bad. If you feel the need to hide it, it's probably a negative. In fact, I can't. I try to think of an example. I'd say probably because I want to just maybe there's something out there that you could do in secret that's not bad. I tried to think for the last couple days of an example. I couldn't think of one. I couldn't think of something that I could do in secret and try to hide from everyone that wouldn't be destructive. I, I couldn't think of one. But you wouldn't do it by yourself. Right, you wouldn't be planning that secretive by yourself. You'd have some people in on it, right? So it wouldn't be completely secretive, right? I mean, that was the only one I thought. Maybe a surprise, right? They'd probably be keeping it a secret from one person. That's really about it, though, right? I mean, you'd be a lot of people in on it. So it really wouldn't be in secret. I mean, you're right. That's the only one I could think of. But it's, even that is, yes, Ripley, you got one? Mm -hmm. What about like a present? A present? <laughs> yeah, but it's something you're going to eventually expose, right? Yeah. So you're not, you're not hiding it forever. That's right. So it's not something that's secret. Think about your life, yeah. So I just, hiding Jews. Hiding the oh Jews. <laughs> I hate to say it, but that is. That's a good one. That's a good one. You got one. Or it's a boom. That's good. That was good, yeah. You can try to hide it? Yeah. The reality is, if you are hiding something in your life, there's probably something wrong with that. Hiding something out is probably something wrong. We want to, anything that's hidden is probably with the exception of hiding Jews during World War II. Uh, right? Um, ask yourself this question. Not, and I'm not, this is not just social media. Ask yourself this question. How am I engaging with people that I barely know? The reason why I think social media can be so dangerous is that we can engage with people that we don't know or we hardly know. There's this, there's an element of, uh, uh, being anonymous that keeps you from, uh, that keeps you at bay or keeps people at bay. You don't really know who you are, and so you can engage in things that may be inappropriate uh, without people really knowing who you are. How are you engaging with people that you barely know or don't know on on, on social media? <coughs> you know things like chat rooms and forums, or maybe messaging people on Facebook um, that you don't really know, or Ask FM, which is the newest rave coming out. I mean, all these types of things, you want to be, you say, hey, what, how am I engaging with these things with people that I don't know? Chances are, if you're engaging in a way that you would be ashamed for your parents to find out or for someone to come in and see it, chances are it's probably bad. And let me tell you something, there is something so freeing about living in the light. There's something, so I remember um, all through my early 20s, I, I lived a lifestyle where I came to church and I projected the Christian face. And I worked at a church, and I was, but I had lots of stuff in my life that was hidden that I was afraid for people to find out. And I had to keep my story straight. And I had to keep things hidden. There's something, something great and freeing and awesome about people having my Facebook password. Multiple people have my Facebook password. Multiple people have my, uh, my cell phone password. Who has my cell phone? Actually, who in this room knows my cell phone code? Anyone know it? Not one person in this room knows my cell phone code, really? Don't you know it? I bet you have to guess it. I don't know. No, really? <laughs> no, I thought for sure people in this room, you don't know it? What? Oh, well, it's 2525. And so now you guys know that one. You did know it, right? I didn't know that. When you said it, I realized. Yeah, I thought I, mean, I thought for sure. There's really someone in this room. Right? There's something about I, there, my ATM debit card. Multiple people have my ATM debit card pin and my, and my bank account information. Here's the reason why. At any time, some of my friends that I trust, can go in my account and see where I'm spending my money at any time. I got nothing to hide. My email, my email accounts are always open. Multiple people have my Facebook, my Twitter. At any time, you can come. My life's open. You want to come check me out? Come check it out. I have nothing to hide. Ask yourself this question. Am I living a life that I would allow anyone at any time to look at everything? Your text message history. Or have you had any conversations or done anything recently? You're going, I sure hope that person doesn't tell anyone about that. If that's you, if you're in a situation where you're hoping people are not telling people about things, 
you're probably doing something pretty stupid that will eventually bring some destruction to your life. The third thing that we often do is that we like to engage in things that are inappropriate um, or we engage in things that are bad for us because our hearts want bad things. This is what I spent the last few minutes talking about. Yeah, but there's Bibles underneath your seats. We can grab those. Um, I want to read uh, one, two, three, four, five scripture verses tonight. And so I want you guys, um, five people who maybe want to read out loud who are not afraid to read out loud real loud who can volunteer. All right? Ripley number one, Jeremiah 17, 9. All right, what's your name? I'm sorry. Lucy. Lucy, why don't you go to Jeremiah 2, 22. Ripley number two, go to James 1, 14 through 15. I can't see the freckle. It's so hard for me to tell you guys apart from a distance. Sorry. One of them has a freckle. Olivia has a freckle there. Can't see it from this distance. I'm trying. I'm trying to work on it. All right. Um, Jeremiah 17, 9 is the first one. Jeremiah 2, 22. James 1, 14 and 15. Uh, how about a guy? Can I get a guy to read Romans 5, 10? Can I have a man? All right. Hope we're going to read Romans 5, 10. All right. And can I have a man read Jeremiah 13, 23? And a man? I got that one. Jeremiah 20, 13, 23. All right. So no one needs to turn there for at this moment. You're going to listen to them. Whoever's going to read the first one, just stand up really, really loud and read it to us. Okay. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? The heart is deceitful above all things, the prophet Jeremiah tells us. That means more than the devil, you will deceive yourself. More than the devil will deceive you. People, well, the devil made me do it. Not likely. No, no. More, well, that friend tricked me. No, you are more likely to trick yourself. Your heart, your emotions, your feelings are way more likely to deceive you than any person you ever know. Your heart is more wicked than anything else in your life. So you can't trust your own heart. I like this thing on Facebook. I like this thing on Instagram. I, my emotions are liking this. Chances are you can't trust that. So you need to trust the scripture. We're going to talk about how you do that in just a moment. Uh, Jeremiah 2, 22. Really loud. Although you wash yourself with soda and use an abundance of soap, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the sovereign Lord. <laughs> you are stained. Your heart is stained. Even though you try to wash yourself and clean yourself up, you internally are wicked. The Bible makes it very clear that we as human beings were made by God in his image, perfect, with the imago Dei, which we've heard this term with you guys last week and the week before, the image of God. God took himself and put himself in you. You were beautiful, created to reflect him. But because you sin, because we betrayed God, we separated ourselves from God, the image of God in us has been corrupted and marred, and elements of it have been stripped away. And we are now disgusting and repugnant in so many ways. Uh, let me get James 1, 14 and 15. Who's got that? Really loud. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desires, he is dragged away and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. James, he's one of the, this is the younger brother of Jesus, is saying to us, Hey, hey, you don't think that it's someone else outside of you that's dragging you in. It's your own heart and the disgusting nature inside of you that grabs you and drags you away. And then what it does, it gets inside of you and you give birth to death. Because you follow the bad inclinations of your heart, it eventually brings death into your life. You're giving birth to evil things in your life because of the stupid things that you chose to do by following the wicked desires of your own heart. It's very encouraging, isn't it? <laughs> Romans 5.10. Really loud for me. For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? We were enemies of God. That's actually the wrong verse. I don't know. I was supposed to be Romans 5. That's right. It's a good verse, too. We were enemies of God. <laughs> wrong verse. Um, we were enemies of God. And uh, he chose to love us and die for us anyway. Last verse. Jeremiah 13, 23. Stand up, Mr. Baker. You made it real loud. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Neither can you do good or are accustomed to doing evil. Prophet Jeremiah, can the Ethiopian change his skin color? Can a leopard change his spots? 
can 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 a someone who is from Ethiopia who is black change his skin color? Can can, can a leopard change his spots? No, he can't. You can't. And the, the reality is this: in the same way, you as human beings, you can't change your own heart. You can't. So there's only one thing you can do to change your heart, and that is to spend time with God. Listen, if you are liking things that are inappropriate. If you, I remember when I was a kid, I remember uh, like I'd see people trip and fall, and I thought it was funny. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> so think, but think about that. I, I engaged in laughing at someone else's misfortune. I, there's something wrong with that. Because that shows that there's something in my heart that likes seeing other people hurt. And God doesn't like, like people seeing me hurt. God likes to see people do well and prosper and not be harmed. God likes to protect his children. And, and while and, and to and to give us strength to go through certain situations and to see us be victorious, God doesn't enjoy seeing people trip and fall, so neither should I. And I think sometimes uh, we like certain things, or maybe one of our friends at school tells us a joke that we know is really inappropriate, but we laugh anyway. We kind of like it. Or maybe we see a YouTube video that we know is inappropriate, but we still think it's kind of funny. Or maybe we see something happen. That we know is just not quite right, but we still take some sort of joy in it. And we like it. If you find yourself in taking any sort of joy or enjoyment, pleasure, or like, in something that God doesn't take joy or pleasure in, then your heart is wicked, and God needs to change it. God is longing to change our hearts. I want to read one verse to you from 1 John. 2.15. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. John is saying all those things in the world, the bad, the disgusting things out there, if you love those things, if you enjoy those things, God's not in you. If you say tonight, I'm a follower of Jesus, can you have been rescued? I love God. If that's you, I would ask you to examine, examine your life. Examine your heart. Do I really love God? Do I really love the things that God loves? When something bad is happening in someone's life, does it break my heart? Because it breaks God's heart. When I see some, when I see someone uh, in a something good happen to someone, do I get excited for them or do I get jealous? Or do I get mad that it's not happening to me? Because when something good happens to someone, God gets excited for them. And if your heart doesn't match God's heart, there's something wrong with one of those two people. If God's heart and your heart don't match, one of those two beings are in the wrong. Chances are it's not God. <laughs> Ask yourself this question. If God was controlling my Facebook profile, would he like this thing I just liked? Would he read the thing? Would he be friends with that person? Would he like that certain page? Would he engage? Would he watch this YouTube video? Would he listen to that joke? Would he watch that thing behind my parents' back? Would he watch that movie? Would he do that thing? Would God like the things that I like? And I, if I'm honest, sometimes there are things, guys, that I like today in my life. There are sometimes things that I take joy in and take pleasure in that God, God is repulsed by. It would make God vomit. I'm in the wrong, and I want to change. I want to be different because I love God. How do we do that? I'm out of time, so I'm going to go very quickly. Uh, we do that, number one, by disengaging from things that are inappropriate. We disengage from inappropriate things. And so recently I've been losing weight. When I moved to Florida through Mexico, I was 238 pounds. I weighed myself today. I was 209. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, 209. I weighed myself at the gym today. And, uh, and the first thing I had to do is I really like donuts. I love donuts. <laughs> love donuts. Okay. Let me tell you, the red velvet donuts that we have here on the weekend oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, at the gathering. Oh, club. I would like that on Facebook. Um, <laughs> Instagram that junk. I would like it and hashtag it. Right. And so, I, so I find myself saying, "Listen, I want to lose weight. I'm really unhealthy. I'm really a big disgusting slob. I really need to be healthier." And so the first thing I did was I stopped eating sugar and gluten, and I stopped eating saturated fat. I stopped engaging in the things that were bad for me. Even though I still like them, even though I still crave them, my heart still wanted it, my stomach still wanted it, my appetite hadn't changed yet, but I made a decision. Get rid of the junk. And for you, 
If you want to have an appetite that matches God's, if you want your heart to match God's, the first step is to eradicate the things in your life that are inappropriate. And for you, that may be, for you, maybe using social media at all is inappropriate. Maybe you are incapable of appropriately using social media. Then for you, you need to get rid of it completely. Ask yourself that question right now. What are the things that are in my life that I know are bad that I gotta get rid of? Number two, the second step is ask God to change your heart by spending time with him. Allow God to change your heart by spending time with him. The more time you spend with God, the more your, your likes will change. I used to enjoy looking at girls inappropriately when I was younger. I used to, I used to enjoy that. But the more I spent time with God, and the more I read the Bible, and I prayed, and I came to church, you know what I realized in my teenage years, in my early 20s? And then I actually start disliking looking at girls inappropriately. And so I stopped looking at girls inappropriately because my heart changed. My heart began to change. And the same thing happened to you. I give you an example. I dated a girl long, 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 long time ago. It's been a while. Anyway, um, <laughs> hashtag keep praying. Um, anyway, so, uh, anyway, so I dated a girl named Janae a couple years back, like in 06, 07, 08, for like a year and a half, whatever we dated. And I used to hate going to movies. I hated going to movies, dude. Does anyone love going to movies? Raise your hand. Okay. You guys are, wow, everyone's almost there. I'm like the weird one. But this is the reason why. I hate going to movie theater because I love having conversations. And two hours of being quiet is insane to me. Like, I just can't handle being quiet for two hours. Second reason is I'm at the center of attention in that moment. What is that all about? I want to be the center of attention all the time. It's my selfishness. I know, I'm, the Lord is working on me still. And so, the reality is, so I didn't like going to movies, but Janae loved going to the movies. And I started hanging out with Janae. I'm like, okay, I'll go to the movie because she was cute, and I liked her, I'll go to the movies. And, I went, and the more I hung out with her, and the more I saw her, and the more my heart and affection grew for her, the more my heart and affection grew for the things that, that she liked. And by the end of our relationship, we ended up breaking up just to be a great girl, and be a great friendship. We just felt like, you know, God was saying this was not the appropriate one to marry. So we, we broke up. We're still friends still today. Um, but I, I tell you, every now, I, every now and then I still talk to her and I'll say, you know what? It's funny. I enjoy going to movies now because of you. Uh, you know, my appetite has changed. I, you know, at last week I had a slice of pizza. I hadn't had pizza like in two months or two weeks ago. I had a slice of pizza and I almost like was like, disgusted. I used to eat a whole pie of pizza like in the, I mean, at night. I, I eat a whole thing of pizza easily. And so... And, uh, you know, I, I drink a two-liter Mountain Dew and a pizza at night. It was no, and I love it. Now I eat a slice of pizza, and I'm like, oh, 